Hello and welcome back to our third part of the Weird Dice series. Today I have the non-transitive crime dice. They were discovered by James Grime, a mathematician that you might know if you're watching the number file um, videos. He also has his own YouTube channel and a very nice website. I will link to all to that in the video description. But what are the non-transitive dice? Well, they come in a nice box. You get five or ten, depending on which set you take. Um, five are enough, but ten are needed for special games. And the non-transitive dice are so that you can pick any two dice and always pick a set that so that one beats the other. And there's no absolute best die in this whole set. So they made a nice little sheet for the instructions. Here you see all the dice and what numbers are on them. And yeah, they are not your usual dice. For example, the, the magenta or I would call it purple die has four sixes and two ones. And the red dice, for example, have a nine, which usually doesn't appear on a six-sided die, and the rest are fours. So they are absolutely not your standard dies. Okay, um, you can order them in two ways. You have the first chain, which is ordered by word length. So red is beaten by blue, which is beaten by olive, which is beaten by yellow, which is beaten by magenta or purple which in turn can be beaten by red. And you won't win with every throw, but here are the odds. For example, blue beats red 7 out of 12 times. So if we try this once, uh, red and blue. Blue beats red, yes, that's correct. I'll try blue beats red again. And red beats blue. Of course I will do another great session of a lot of throws where we try to figure out brute force style if those values are actually correct. There's also a second chain which is in alphabetical order blue, magenta, olive, red, yellow. And that's probably also why they call this here magenta and not purple because then it wouldn't fit anymore. Because honestly this is not magenta. This is definitely purple. Yeah, and they also go into detail about using double dice. You can also do that and um, playing not with two people but with three people. Then you can also uh, pick a subset. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you to try that out. And we will just need five dice like this. Put the rest to the side. I prepared a little sheet where we will mark um, which die beat which other die and we will sum everything up and calculate the odds. So let's get started. Okay, this is the final result. Um, quite a few of throws. Here's also the summarized result. However, let's take a look at the raw numbers. Let's take this away for a short while. So I added up all the wins. So in the top row we have the color and then we have the color that was beaten. For example, blue beat magenta 18 times all of 13 times, red 10 times, etc, etc. And also the total number of wins. So as you can see, um, blue is in absolute terms the weakest die in the set, with only 49 wins, and yellow is the strongest one with 80 wins. However, um, blue will be beaten by magenta, 
No, not white. Um, blue will be beaten by yellow actually. Yellow beats blue 25 times and blue beats yellow only 8 times. So that's why you get the non-transitive thing going and you get the circle where blue beats magenta, magenta beats olive, olive beats red and red beats yellow and yellow again beats blue. I also calculated the probabilities of a win for blue versus the other dice etc and also for the other colors which uh, all the probabilities will add up to one in each column obviously and yeah if you compare this to the predicted results the theoretical optimum my well 80 or so throws give us these values here so you have 55 percent chance of blue beating magenta 75 percent of magenta beating olive 55% of green or olive beating red, 56% of red beating yellow, and 76% of yellow beating blue. And the theory predicts that we have two thirds here, so 67%. Uh, it's not that close. This year is rather close, the 13 18th. The green die for me was way off 69% versus 55%. And red was even worse with 72 versus 56 percent but still you always have larger than 50 percent chance of beating the predicted die so I guess this is probably a bit of bad luck on my part I would have probably need, needed to roll quite a lot more throws than the 80 that I did however I think this is enough to show that those dice do work and uh, without doing heavy math, just with some patience and tabulating all the results here. And what I didn't even notice before, the green die has even one side which has zero dots on it. So I even got a zero in here. I think you could have simply added one to every side, but then I guess the 10, which is on, which die is it? Uh, the 9 here. The red die has a 9. That would have been a 10 then and that would probably have been a bit much. So I think using the 9 and the 0 is actually quite clever to get around the yeah, layout of, of the die faces. All in all, pretty nice dice. It's uh, not a sure bet if you play against another player. You have to have a little bit of luck. You still can lose those games, but you have a definite advantage in winning those games if you know which die beats which. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. This concludes the Weird Dice series, so share, like and subscribe if you want. And other than that, thanks for watching.